This lesson is about refraction. Here are some things you need to know about electromagnetic waves. First of all, all electromagnetic waves travel at a speed that we call the speed of light. I don't think this is a great name for it because this isn't only the speed of visible light, this is also the speed of gamma rays, x-rays, radio waves, and everything else on the spectrum when they are traveling in a vacuum. The speed of light is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. That's 300 million meters per second. And this is abbreviated by the letter C. That's the C in E equals MC squared. In other materials like water or glass or any other material that light can travel through, light's going to travel at different slower speeds. And we'll get to that in a moment. Something that's going to be important to keep in mind is that the frequency of the wave always remains constant. Light traveling in a vacuum is the fastest thing in the universe. Nothing can travel faster than light in a vacuum. Light does, however, travel slower when it's in a medium, in a material. Every material, every medium, has what's known as an index of refraction. Here's the table of indices of refraction right off your reference table. These are just a handful of the materials that light can travel through. If you go on the internet, you can find the index of refraction of many, many more materials. The index of refraction is an indicator of how much light slows down in that medium. The higher the index of refraction, the more the light slows down. Looking at the table again, we can see that light must travel the slowest in diamond because diamond has the highest index of refraction. Light would travel the fastest in air because it has the smallest index of refraction. The index of refraction is a ratio, which means it's unitless, of the speed of light in a vacuum to the speed of light in the material. Written as an equation, it looks like this n, the index of refraction, equals c over v. Once again, c is the speed of light in vacuum, and v is the speed of light in whatever material it happens to be traveling through. Let's take a look at an example. What is the speed of light in quartz? Well, we start with n equals c over v. We can plug in the index of refraction of quartz, 1.46, and the speed of light in a vacuum, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. We do a little cross multiplication and division, and we find that light travels 2.05 times 10 to the 8 meters per second in quartz. It's still really fast, 205 million meters per second, but it's still slower than light travels in a vacuum. Here's another example. Light is traveling at a speed of 2.26 times 10 to the 8 meters per second in an unknown medium. Let's figure out what that medium is. We can start once again with the equation n equals c over v, and we know that light always travels 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second in vacuum, and in this material it happens to be traveling 2.26 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. This gives us an index of refraction of 1.33. Look on your reference table. What material is this? It's water! Now I'd like to take a look at some ratios. Ready for some algebra? We're going to compare the speed of light and the index of refraction of two different materials. You don't have to write anything down until the end, just try to follow along and make sure the math makes sense. So we can write for material 1, n1 equals c over v1. And for material 2, we can write n2 equals c over v2. Now let's turn this into a ratio of n2 over n1. All I did was take those two equations and basically divide them by each other. You can see that we're dividing by a fraction, so what we can do instead is multiply by the reciprocal. Hopefully you can see now that there's a c on the top and a c on the bottom, and so the c's cancel out. This leaves us with n2 over n1 equals v1 over v2. We're not done yet, but let's take a look at that. Do you notice that the n's are 2 over 1 and the v's are 1 over 2? That's because there's an inverse relationship between the index of refraction and the speed of light in the material. Let's go a little farther. The speed of a wave is the frequency times the wavelength. Since the frequency of the light doesn't change as it goes from one material into another, we don't have to write f1 and f2, it's just f. 
and since we have an F on the top and an F on the bottom, those can cancel out. This leaves us with our final set of ratios, N2 over N1 equals V1 over V2 equals lambda 1 over lambda 2. Like we've seen before, you would take two of these terms based on what you're given and what you're trying to find out and set them equal to each other. Now we finally get to refraction itself. These are all examples of refraction. When light traveled from air into glass or glass into water, the speed changed because the materials have different indices of refraction and therefore the direction changed. That's what gives us those weird distorted images. Refraction then is the bending of light as it travels between two materials with different indices of refraction. Let's take a look at an example. This line represents the boundary between air and water. Here's an incident ray and we'll describe the direction of this ray like we did with reflection by measuring the angle between the ray and the normal. This angle is called the angle of incidence and we're going to call this theta 1. Now we know that light slows down when it goes from air into water. This is going to mean that the refracted ray is going to bend toward the normal. That is the angle of refraction is going to be smaller than the angle of incidence. Here's another example. This time the line represents the boundary between glass and air. Once again, we have an incident ray. We'll measure the angle of this incident ray between itself and the normal. We'll call that theta 1, the angle of incidence. And now, when the light travels from glass into air, we know it's going to speed up. And when it speeds up, the refracted ray bends away from the normal. In this case, the angle of refraction, theta 2, is bigger than the angle of incidence. The relationship between the angles of incidence and refraction and the indices of refraction of the two materials are represented by an equation called Snell's Law. This equation is N1 sine theta 1 equals N2 sine theta 2. It doesn't really matter which material you call 1 and 2 as long as the angle in that material and the index of refraction of that material go together. It would be a great idea to write this equation very prominently in your notes and to accompany it with this diagram. Let's take a look at an example. We have a ray of light traveling in air striking a boundary with ethyl alcohol at an angle of 40 degrees. We want to figure out what's the angle of refraction in the ethyl alcohol. We can start with Snell's law, n1 sine theta 1 equals n2 sine theta 2, and we can plug in everything that we know. We can look up the indices of refraction on our reference table. Air is 1.00, and the angle in air is 40 degrees. The index of refraction of ethyl alcohol is 1.36, and the angle in ethyl alcohol is our unknown. We'll just leave it as theta 2. We can find that the sine of theta 2 equals 0 0.47, and then in our calculators we can do inverse sine of 0 0.47 to find out that theta 2 must be 28 degrees. If you're not sure how to do that math in your calculator, talk to me in class. There's a particular angle involved in refraction that's called the critical angle. This is the incident angle that results in a 90 degree angle of refraction. There's only a critical angle for a ray of light traveling from a material with a larger index of refraction to a material of a smaller index of refraction. Here's a diagram to represent what I mean. The critical angle is an angle of incidence represented by theta c, and the refracted angle is exactly 90 degrees. Total internal reflection is a phenomenon that can occur that involves the critical angle. Total internal reflection occurs when light is traveling in a medium with a high index of refraction and strikes a boundary with a material of lower index of refraction at an angle greater than the critical angle. You can see in this animation that when the incident angle is small, 
most of the light is refracted and some of it is reflected. When the angle gets too big and crosses the critical angle, all of the light is reflected and it's reflected within the material itself internally. So right about there is the critical angle. When the incident angle is larger than that, all of the light is reflected internally and none of it is refracted.